On September 17, 2023, a wave of panic spread across the internet as rumors circulated about a catastrophic car accident involving none other than iconic actor Richard Thomas. We know many of you are eager to find out what happened, and we're here to provide you with the facts. So what exactly happened? On that fateful September day, shocking news began to circulate about a severe auto accident involving celebrated actor Richard Thomas. Details were sketchy at best, with many fans anxiously awaiting more information. As the days unfolded, it became clear that this was indeed a serious accident. An ongoing investigation was launched to unravel the circumstances surrounding the incident, shedding light on what truly transpired. Unfortunately, the online world was flooded with unwarranted rumors, some even suggesting that Richard Thomas may have tragically lost his life. Many of these rumors were based on hearsay and had not been substantiated with any verified evidence. The truth of the matter is that Richard is still very much alive and continues to be an active presence in the world of entertainment. We can all breathe a sigh of relief knowing that this talented actor is still with us. Richard Thomas's Story Thomas was born on June 13, 1951, in New York City. He is a highly respected American actor with a career spanning several decades. He has earned a well-deserved reputation as one of the most versatile and gifted actors in the industry. Thomas is perhaps best known for his Emmy Award-winning portrayal of John Boy Walton on the iconic TV series The Waltons, which aired from 1972 to 1981. His performance garnered widespread acclaim and recognition, solidifying his status as a remarkable actor. Thomas's journey in the world of entertainment began at an early age with appearances in various stage productions and TV programs. His talent and dedication did not go unnoticed, and he soon found himself working on Broadway and starring in television commercials. A pivotal moment arrived when he was cast as John Boy Walton, the eldest son in the Walton family. The show depicted the life of a rural family during the economic crisis of the early 1920s and through World War II. Thomas's performance as John Boy was met with critical acclaim, and he became inseparable from the character's identity. In recognition of his outstanding work, Thomas was awarded an Emmy for his role, cementing his reputation as an exceptionally talented actor. While The Waltons remains one of his most iconic contributions, Thomas has had a diverse and prolific acting career, appearing in a wide range of TV programs, movies, and stage productions. His versatility as an actor is evident in his ability to take on various roles, from shows and comedies to even Shakespearean plays. Thomas has been involved in numerous significant projects, including his portrayal of President John F. Kennedy on the TV miniseries, The Kennedys of Massachusetts, and his participation in the miniseries, Roots, The Next Generations. Additionally, he has continued to showcase his talent on stage in various theater productions. Thomas's enduring popularity and significant contributions in the entertainment world have left an indelible legacy. He is widely regarded as one of the most talented actors of his generation, and his portrayal of John Boy remains a cherished part of television history. Following the conclusion of The Waltons, Thomas has maintained a consistent presence both on television and in film. He's taken on roles in various miniseries and TV movies, and has also made appearances in feature films like An Unmarried Woman and Wonder Boys. In recent times, Thomas has made a return to television, showcasing his talent in shows such as Ozark and The Americans. Currently, he's on tour across the U.S., embodying the character of Atticus Finch in a production of To Kill a Mockingbird. The stage production underlines his enduring presence in the world of entertainment and his unwavering commitment to delivering exceptional performances. Some have wondered about Thomas's recent status. First, at the age of 72, it's natural to wonder about his health and well-being. Additionally, his public presence has lessened in recent years, compared to his peak popularity during the 70s and 80s. Accident during the Emmys Thomas had an unforgettable and somewhat humorous incident on his way to the Emmy Awards ceremony in 1973. While the prospect of winning was undoubtedly thrilling, the thought of delivering an acceptance speech had him feeling quite nervous. As he made his way to the stage upon winning an Emmy, a video of the event captured his shock and surprise. 
He started his acceptance speech by revealing an incident that had occurred en route to the ceremony, much to the amusement of the audience. Well, I should tell you now that on the way to change into this suit, coming downtown, it suddenly occurred to me that if I had to come up here and say something tonight, I would have nothing to say. So I started thinking of something to say, and I destroyed my car, he confessed, which elicited laughter from the crowd. Despite his lack of preparation, Thomas managed to compose a brief and impromptu speech. He explained that he had been preoccupied with thoughts of what to say, and therefore ended up in a car accident. Said Thomas, Here I am, a young star in Hollywood with my first car, and it was a white Volvo station wagon. I wasn't exactly on the fast track, but I was driving and thought, You might win this thing. You're not going to, but you might. If you do, what the hell are you going to say? I had no idea. Continuing, he said, So I started to think about it, and bam, I went right into the car in front of me. I didn't mess up my car too bad, but bad enough. I drove home, and I'd forgotten to think of what I was going to say. Then, here I am sitting in the theater, and they call my name. I went up, and I was like, I wrecked my car. Despite his initial shock, Thomas managed to pull himself together and express his gratitude to all of those he needed to thank. In many ways, Thomas was quite different from the character he portrayed on The Waltons. While he may have embodied the role of John Boy on screen, off screen he was a New York-raised actor who didn't even have a driver's license until he was in his early 20s. And that was because the series demanded that he get behind the wheel of a truck. Thomas is no stranger to misfortune. Thomas nearly died in a motorcycle accident while The Waltons was on air. In the fifth season, in an episode titled The First Edition, viewers saw John Boy walking with a cane. What many fans may not realize is that Thomas was not merely acting. He was dealing with a real injury sustained while filming the episode. The year was 1976, and he was also working on a James Dean tribute at the time, a movie called September 30th, 1955. The film was directed and written by James Bridges and was based on Bridges' autobiographical story about how he felt on the day his hero, James Dean, tragically passed away. Bridges initially had reservations about casting Thomas, primarily because he had never seen the Waltons. However, everything changed when Thomas walked into his office. I resisted the suggestion of Richard Thomas never having seen the Waltons, Bridges recalled. But the minute he walked into my office, I fell in love with him. Just six days into shooting, however, disaster struck in the form of a horrific motorcycle accident that could have cost Thomas his life. Bridges described the incident, saying, quote, It was the scene where Richard revs up his motorcycle in defiance of the townspeople at the homecoming parade. He looked over his shoulder and took off. The motorcycle jolted forward and headed for the flatbed of a truck. Thankfully, quick thinking on Thomas's part allowed him to jump to safety, narrowly avoiding a catastrophic injury or even a fatal accident. Nevertheless, he did sustain a severe injury, breaking his ankle in two places. As a result, filming for the movie was delayed by over a year. Despite the pain and challenges stemming from the accident, Thomas continued to appear on the Waltons while managing his injury. He displayed remarkable determination and resilience during this time, never letting his injury hinder his commitment to his craft or his fans. In interviews, Thomas reflected on his connection to James Dean. He shared that he was too young to have been personally affected by Dean's death, stating, quote, I wasn't overcome with grief on the day James Dean died. I was just four at the time. However, as an actor, Thomas developed a deep respect for Dean's unique talent and the impossibility of imitating his style. Said Thomas, quote, Of course, Dean figures prominently in the feelings of any actor alive today. I have a tremendous appreciation for his performances, but I'm not influenced by them. You cannot be influenced by a man like James Dean and retain an ounce of your own identity as an actor. That would be like a high school poet trying to imitate E.E. E. Cummings. For fans of the Waltons who watched Thomas in September 30th, 1955, it must have been a shock to see the actor they associated with John Boy portraying a character so vastly different. Thomas acknowledged this stark contrast, saying, quote, The boy I played on September 30th, 1955 is not at all like John Boy. 
He sees himself as dangerous and unpredictable, and he plays with the ladies, which is a departure for me. More on Thomas and his career. Over the course of his career, Thomas has made a profound impact on the world of entertainment. Today, Thomas's career has spanned nearly five decades, with a wide range of performances both on stage and screen. As always, he remains best known to Benny for his breakthrough role as John Boy. Recently, however, he took on the role of Atticus Finch in a touring production of To Kill a Mockingbird. In a recent interview ahead of the play's opening at an Ohio theater, Thomas shared insights into his journey, reflecting on the Waltons, his early experiences as a child actor, the dynamics of playing good guys versus villains, and how he's skillfully avoided being pigeonholed in his career. When it comes to bringing good men to life on screen and on stage, Thomas demonstrates a unique ability to infuse depth and complexity into his characters. Thomas views the character of John Boy as more conflicted and nuanced than some fans' nostalgic memories might suggest. As Thomas explains, quote, The Waltons is the story of a young artist remembering his family. He loved his family and community, but part of him was trying to figure out how he could get out and have a life as an artist. This perspective highlights the duality within John Boy's character, making him both relatable and multidimensional. Now 71, Thomas has continued to portray a variety of good men on stage, including a previous tour when he took on the role of Juror 8, made famous by Henry Fonda in 12 Angry Men. Bringing these characters to life convincingly while avoiding one-dimensional cliches begins with the quality of the scripts he works with. According to Thomas, quote, you have to have a text that allows for complexity, some sense of inwardness that gives you the opportunity to create a real person. Thomas's emphasis on depth and complexity is a testament to his dedication to his craft. How did Thomas's childhood shape his career? Thomas's affinity for the world of entertainment can be traced back to his childhood, where he was immersed in the world of show business. His parents were both dancers with the New York City Ballet, and young Richard often watched their performances from offstage. He fondly recalls, quote, I was almost born in the trunk. Theater was the world I grew up in. At the tender age of six, he made his acting debut in summer theater. During the 1950s, known as the era of live TV and plays, Thomas became a prolific child actor. His Broadway debut at the age of seven, portraying the youngest son, John Roosevelt, in the inspirational Franklin Roosevelt biodrama, Sunrise at Campobello, marked the beginning of a remarkable career. Even at such a young age, Thomas ventured into darker roles, stating, quote, I started playing murderous children when I was nine on television. By the time I was old enough to do anything else beyond acting, I had no skills, so I stuck with it. Why does Thomas relish villains? While many associate Thomas with John Boy, he has actively pursued and relished playing dark and villainous characters throughout his career. These diverse roles have allowed him to showcase his range and depth as an actor. Some of his notable ventures into the world of villains include portraying Shakespeare's envious Iago and the murderous Richard III in regional theater productions. He's also delved into compromised characters, such as FBI director Frank Gadd in the FX spy thriller The Americans, and the sinister father of Wendy, played by Laura Linney, in the Netflix drama Ozark. In Thomas' own words, quote, Villains embody and celebrate parts of ourselves we don't dare express, so they're more delightful and dangerous. Thomas departed from the Waltons following five seasons, though the series continued for four more years. Thomas explains, quote, People ask why I left. I had the sense that staying would take that much longer to move past the show's impact. There were parts I clearly wasn't offered. For an imaginative industry, lots of people have a staggering lack of imagination. How did theater become his saving grace? Thomas frequently returned to the stage, appearing in 14 Broadway plays, both classics and new works. In the 2017 revival of The Little Foxes, where he co-starred with Cynthia Nixon and Laura Linney, Thomas received a Tony nomination for featured actor. Thomas's wisdom on longevity in the entertainment industry is profound. Quote, In this business, they figure out what tricks you do and then they want you to do those tricks. 
If you want satisfaction as an actor, you have to play the long game. Richard Thomas today. Good night, John Boy. A phrase that follows Thomas wherever he goes. While some actors might resent being forever associated with a role they left behind long ago, Thomas, at age 71, takes it in stride. He appreciates the affectionate callback to his Emmy-winning portrayal of John Walton Jr., also known as John Boy. According to Thomas, this callback is a common occurrence at his performances. He remarks, quote, Oh, they do it all the time. They do it at every show I've ever been in. For him, it's a touching tribute from fans, so long as they don't disrupt the performance. Thomas explains, quote, They can do whatever they want, as long as they don't interrupt the performance. I mean, you don't want somebody yelling it out in the middle of a scene, but that doesn't happen. It's usually at curtain call, and I love it. I'm very proud of that show. When asked about accepting the role of Atticus Finch in the stage play To Kill a Mockingbird, Thomas responded with real enthusiasm. Quote, as far as accepting the role, I mean, come on, it's Atticus Finch. Is that a real question? Atticus Finch is, of course, the iconic figure made famous through Harper Lee's Pulitzer Prize winning novel and the 1962 film adaptation, which earned Gregory Peck an Oscar. The stage version, adapted from the book by Oscar and Emmy winning writer Aaron Sorkin, offers a fresh perspective on the character, making the role even more appealing for Thomas. In Sorkin's version, Atticus is portrayed with a vulnerable and personal story, emphasizing his humanity rather than his iconic status. Thomas elaborates, quote, He's brought Atticus down off his pedestal. People say, What does it feel like to play an icon? And of course you can't. Icons are unplayable. Icons are constructs. They're not real things. What you want to play on stage is a person. The adaptation weaves Atticus into the fabric of the community, making the character even more relatable. And Sorkin has not only reimagined Atticus Finch, but also transformed other characters within the play. Thomas points out that Sorkin has brought these characters to life as flesh and blood individuals on stage. Characters like Calpurnia, Tom Robinson, Scout, and Jem are portrayed as relatable and real people before delving into the larger themes of social and racial justice, family, and childhood. Thomas believes that this transformation is the brilliance of Sorkin's work. While the adaptation remains true to the spirit of Harper Lee's novel, it also emphasizes the beauty of childhood. Thomas notes, quote, people forget. It's about remembering what happened when Scout was a child. The story begins with Scout at the age of six, told through her adult memories, as well as the recollections of adult versions of her brother Jem and their friend, Dill Harris. Sorkin takes a unique approach by having young adults portray these roles, allowing them to remember and tell the story simultaneously, creating a purely theatrical experience. Despite being a 62-year-old novel set in a fictional Alabama town nearly 90 years ago, To Kill a Mockingbird continues to resonate. According to Thomas, it's a story that reflects our own experiences and challenges in reconciling our aspirations with the reality of our achievements, or lack thereof. The play poses questions about maintaining idealism versus succumbing to cynicism when confronted with the harsh realities of the world. Such events as the killing of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter protests come to mind when discussing the play's relevance. Thomas emphasizes that Sorkin had already written the play before these events occurred, indicating his foresight. Sorkin aimed to address certain elements present in the original material, such as the concept of the white savior, which To Kill a Mockingbird confronts and provides a fresh perspective on these issues. The play invites the audience to contemplate these themes in light of our ever-changing world. To Kill a Mockingbird is Thomas's third major touring production. Previously, he was seen in 12 Angry Men and The Humans. Thomas loves touring. He emphasizes the importance of being in the right show with the right people and a beautiful production to make the touring experience fantastic. At the end of the day, Thomas has nothing but happy memories and immense pride in the Waltons and what it has represented in his life and career. Thomas expresses his contentment with being associated with the show, which continues to have a significant presence. All nine seasons are available for streaming on Amazon Prime, 
and episodes still air on various channels, making it a timeless classic. Thomas says he finds it amazing that the show has endured for over 50 years. He remembers the early days on set when they weren't even sure if the series would get a second season due to its unique nature. However, it steadily gained popularity, reaching the remarkable position of number two in its second season after starting with middling ratings. Thomas humorously mentions that he loves being known as an old John boy and takes pride in being a grandparent. Quote, who would have thought that 50 years later, this would be the story? I think it's fantastic. I love being an old John boy. It's great. And I'm a grandpa now. If you enjoyed this update and want to stay in the know about your favorite celebrities, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and ring the notification bell so you won't miss any of our latest updates. And as always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.